everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus Aspect Warriors Eldari tutorial and today we are painting some warp spiders. Yes, here they are. Classic old warp spiders, fine cast in all their finery. So <laughs> without further ado, we're going to jump in and start painting them. They've been primed in grace here. Now we're going to be doing this guy and the Exarch for the purposes of this video. We're going to be picking out any of the unique details that the Exarch might have. Um, he's the only one that's different to the rest of them, to be honest. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this guy and then if something unique comes up, we'll show you on the Exarch. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Blood Angels Red as our first colour and we're going to apply this all over the top of all of our armour. Now, the only place we're not going to be doing this on is the top of the head, which is in fact white. And that does include these little kind of bits that I literally just splodged some red on. So there we go. Doing well already, right out of the gate. <laughs> That'll need a correction later, because those are in fact going to be white. And if you need any help, of course, there is the Games Workshop website. All that lovely, sweet pro photography that they have on there. And it tells you where to place the colours. For now, we're just going to get this Blood Angels red all over, just like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to use this to paint in what is going to be all of the black details. Now on the x arc this does include his sort of gauntlets type area. Like so. Just gonna finish that off so I don't forget. This is also going to include the weapons. We also want to do little spars. that come across the body of the weapon. As well as kind of bladed ends. Just make sure you get these from all angles. Because it can be a little annoying. And of course, how could we forget the entire of the back plate as well? It doesn't have to be perfect across the back because these are going to be black. You just want to make sure you get a decent coverage of this all over. As you can see, I'm not being particularly fussy about it being a super smooth coat because once the black Templar goes over the top, 
It'll look nice and uniform. So with that done, you should have some warp spiders that look somewhat like this. Now, as I said, those back plates look rough, but that's okay because what we're going to do now is fix them. Because we're going to take some black Templar and we're going to paint over all of our Basilicon grey areas. And as you can see, once that black Templar goes on, absolutely covers it over nice and lovely. It's a nice uniform black. So with that black Templar applied, as you can see, still drying on our bog standard warp spider, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on. Now the color we're gonna be using next is Orc Flesh, and we're gonna be using this for all of the tassels and for any little hanging warp spider trinkets that some of them are carrying, but not all. So this guy, he isn't carrying one, for example, but our other fellow has got one on his belt. But for now, I'm just going to get these coloured in. So with that orc flesh applied, what we're then going to do is going to take some apothecary white. And we're going to paint this over the top of the helmet, the white veins or kind of blade veins as it were on kind of either side of the helmet as well as any of the other details that we want to be white so this is going to include the banding on the exarch's legs now some of it is currently as i'll show you in just a second after this currently covered in red As you can see, some of this white banding here is covered in red, and that's okay because it is going to be white eventually, but we don't need to shade it because there isn't any kind of recesses on those bands there. So when we come to highlight the white on the X arc, we can just pick out those areas and it's all good. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down lead belcher and we're going to apply this to all of our silver details. Now on the Exarch we have the blades included in this, like that. As you can see, we just want to get this all over. The sort of power node that's running down the middle of the blade it is going to be a different color but at this moment it doesn't really matter if you do get some of this on there the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply this lead belcher over any of the ribbed cables so for example this one just here like that and then we're also going to be applying this all over the kind of mechanical arms on the weapons and this goes for the same thing on our regular warp spider as well and so with that done what we're then going to do is we're going to take some retributor armor and we're going to use this to paint in all of our gold details now this is going to include areas such as any gems such as this one here for example on the exarch's chest and on the exarch in particular we're going to pick out the on the spider motif.
just like that. On the X-Arc as well, I'm going to pick out the power coils. Along the blades. Like so. And then we're also going to, across all of them, pick out these little domed sections on top of the back plate. Like that. These areas down here at the bottom, we're going to make them as gems. The other ones we're not on the back plates, but just these bottom ones. Like so. And on the weapons, we've got the little power nodes as well. That we're also going to colour in with the retributor armour along the kind of base of the weapon. The other thing to do as well, and it's not the best model to demonstrate it on, we've actually got some gems just in here, which I've missed, for example. But the little d dots on the kind of chevron type things that you have on the warp spider's arms and legs. He doesn't have any on his arms. He just has them on his legs, but We'll be picking those out as well. And so with that done, we've just got a couple more base coats left to do. And the first one is going to be to take some Blood Angels Red. I'm going to apply this to the eye lenses. Just take a little bit of this on the tip of our brush. Not very much at all. Just want to very carefully block in the eye lens to get a nice red coat. Just like that. And with that done, we're then going to take some yand and yellow. And this is going to be applied to the weapons, or at least the weapon coil. And it's not really a coil, I guess it's this sensor targeting matrix something or other this thing here <laughs> whatever we're calling that and we're going to just get a nice smooth coat of the end in yellow all over just like this and don't worry it's not going to be left this color but we want this first first coat to be nice and smooth All over. So with that done, all of our base coats are now on. So that means it's time to add some shades. And the first one we're gonna add is Fire Slayer Flesh. Now this is gonna be on most of the gold details. So this is gonna include areas such as the kind of spider icons on their chests like that. We're also going to do this over any kind of little nodes and things that are gold. So for example, just there on the gauntlets, I'm going to do this over the domes on the back plate, like that. We don't need to worry about those gems at the bottom. We just want to leave those nice and shiny for now. And with on the X arc particularly, we're not going to paint in the power nodes on the blades because those are going to be different. However, the ones here, on the guns we are going to do as well as the little chevron ones as well so with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to take some basilicon and gray and we're going to use this to shade all of the silver.
So, with that done, our warp spiders are now at what I would call War Hipster Battle Ready. However, there is one more shading technique in a way that we're going to be doing on the weapons that takes them to that kind of slightly above battle ready technique, but actually kind of really completes the look before, of course, all the highlights and things. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate on this one because it's bigger and easier to show. And the color we're going to be using first is Griff Hound Orange. And what we're going to do here is we're going to load up our brush with a fair whack of Griff Hound Orange. And then just over each of these sections, what we're going to do is we're just going to paint Griff Hound Orange all over the top, just like that, nice and simple. And then we wash the brush and then using the clean brush, we're just going to pull off some of that paint. So we get this orangey yellow effect going down the middle of the coil or section of the lens. Same again on this side. Wash the brush. Put off the excess. Just like this, and we want to go all the way around. This will take a bit of time. But once it's done, it looks absolutely cracking. Of course, there is one step left to go after this. In addition to doing this on the Exarch's weapons, what we're going to do is we're going to take that Griffhound Orange and we're going to paint this over the top of the power nodes on the blades, just like that. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Blood Angels Red to add some real kind of deep shadows and warmth into these weapons. But starting with the Exarch, what we're going to do is we're going to take this Blood Angels Red and we're going to paint it from the bottom up to about three quarters of the way of the power nose like that. So you get this kind of blend up. Because you're working on such a small detail, you need a tiny amount of Blood Angels Red here and it should look pretty blended without having to do too much to it. Of course, if you want to, you can just take a clean brush and just move that paint around just that little bit. You want to avoid doing exactly what I've just done there, which is blobbing it right on the blade. So we just clean the brush and we'll just lift it off like that. Nice little technique for removing contrast paint if you get it quickly. There we go, like so. We're gonna do this on the same weapons as well, but to demonstrate on this one, what we wanna do is we wanna take some of this Blood Angels Red, again, very small amount, and just along the kind of, these no, well these, framing sections, we're just going to add a little kind of almost a recess shade, just like that. So with that done, our warp spiders are now at that kind of typical war hipster battle ready. It's a little bit higher than a normal battle ready, but they're looking pretty good. However, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take them to the next level by doing some layering and some highlights. Now, the first one we're gonna be doing is Corax White. And we're gonna be using this to relayer all of our white details. Uh, so starting with the Exarch, 
as he's got the most. What we're going to do is we're just going to paint this Corax white all over the top of his helmet. Just like this to make it nice and bright. Just like that sort of thing. We will do the rest of it very shortly, but the other areas that we're going to be doing, or other areas that you need to focus on, are the webbing as we've mentioned it before. So you just want to pick all of it out. With the Corax white like this. You want to go around all of it. So once that's done, we'll come back. So that Corax white applied to all of our white details, what we're then going to do is take some thinned down white scar. I'm gonna use this to add a cheeky little highlight to all of our white details. So with that done, what we're now going to do is highlight all of our red armour and our eye lenses using some Fire Dragon Bright. Now for the eye lenses, what we want to do is just want to take a tiny amount of this on our brush and then just highlight the bottom edge like that. Whereas for the rest of it, you just want to start picking out all of the edges. Around all of the armor. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Dawnstone. And we're going to use this to highlight all of our black details. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small amount of this on our brush. And we're just going to start picking out all of those edges. Just like this. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron hand steel and we're going to use this to re-layer all of our silver details. So this is going to include the blades on the Warp Spider Exarc. We're just avoiding anywhere where the shade is really settled. Just like that. Similarly, on the kind of weapon arms, we're just going to go in there, make these nice and bright now. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is just going to take a tiny amount of Stormhost Silver and use this to highlight the blade on the X-Arc, just like that. Just make it nice and shiny and lethal its cutting edge. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight all of the gold and the colour we're going to be using to do that is Canoptec Alloy because we want this nice bright kind of ornate finish to all of our gold details. So we're just going to pick out all of the gems as well, like this, as well as just running a little bit of this along the edges of all of the gold details.
just like this. So with that canoptic alloy applied, we've just got one last thing to do, and that is to add some orc flesh. And this is going to be to all of the gems. Now, we're going to take a little bit of this on our brush, and we're going to apply this just like this over the top. Like so, nice and simple. We've got some on the back here as well. These ones that we did gold earlier. And so with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some moot green and use this to add a little highlight to all of our green gems. What you can also do is add just a little bit of moot green, a little kind of curves and highlight sections on all the tassels as well. And so with that done, just to finish it off, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny dot of Corax White. I'm just going to add this at the top of each of the gems. Like so. Just like that. And so with their bases complete, the Warp Spiders, another one of the Aspect Shrines or Path of the Eldar, whatever they're called, is now finished. That brings us up to four, which is really cool. The Shining Spears, Warp Spiders, Fire Dragons, and the Dire Avengers. More to come, of course, And but these were really, really fun. I really enjoyed these, and they really capture a time of Warhammer where everything was cramped and close to the body, and there was almost no dynamic movement in them whatsoever, apart from the one guy taking a step forward, which is really nostalgic for me. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you can now become a YouTube channel member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, exactly like these awesome folks have done. And if you just want to shoot me a little thanks just because you really love this video, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.